humor is very, very high. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's start with this. Um, yeah. uh, good afternoon to everybody here. I want to thank uh, the academic committee of uh, Challenging Laparoscopy and Robotic. It's been always a pleasure to be in collaborating with you and with European Neurology. Uh, as Aldo Bocciardi said, uh, in Mexico, in general, we have a high incidence of penile cancer. This incidence in genitourinary tumors can be close to 10% of, of, of the genitourinary pathology, oncological pathology. Uh, that worries uh, a lot uh, in, this, um, in this case. Uh, at General Hospital, we have a lot of uh, patient reference, so they're coming to be treated here. Sometimes we decide a new adjuvant therapy or just going to inguinal lymph node dissection after partial or total pen uh, penectomies. Uh, at the beginning, we were performing like um, eight years, ten years ago, uh, the urologists in the oncological unit of General Hospital were performing open inguinal uh, dissections. We even have done some sartorius transpositions to the, to the femoral vessels. Uh, but then after, the Latin American group uh, of Brazil was uh, starting doing the video endoscopic inguinal lymphadenectomy uh, with one of his creators, which is uh, Tobias Machado at Brazil. So we invite Tobias Machado due to the, to the, to the whole um, to the high level of incidence of penile uh, cancer. And he came to teach us uh, in 2012, 2013, the endoscopic, uh, endoscopic inguinal lymphadenectomy. Uh, at that time, we could improve more to reduce the morbidity that was correlated to the necrosis of the skin. Uh, the oncological result was always like uh, promising uh, and still promising. And finally, we were deciding exactly which patient should go to uh, video endoscopic in the lymphadenectomy. Uh, appropriate for N0 or N1 or very low volume disease, which is difficult uh, there because uh, almost in between 80 and 100% of the patients are T2 or T3s. T3, sorry. So most part of these patients have already a uh, radical penectomy. Uh, just to remind, uh, we have three classifications there uh, by the guidelines of non palpable inguinal lymph nodes. Uh, or palpable inguinal nodes, and the worst panorama is to have uh, fixed nodes or very inflammatory nodes in the, uh, in the inguinals. So in general, we are having patients which have uh, penile uh, radical penectomy and going to neoadjuvant therapy with uh, chemo uh, following the guidelines or just going to inguinal lymph node dissection. Clinically, most part of the patients have um, palpable, palpable nodes. So these palpable nodes, the way to, this, to take a decision is just to know or be sure if they're fixed or not. If they're fixed, the result of inguinal uh, uh, endoscopic will be catastrophic as it's normally done with the, with the follow of this, of this disease. So just to remind some anatomical aspects, we have this uh, a picture of the inguinal zone. We need to be familiarized to the inguinal ligament from the side of the leg. We have some vascular structures and principal mus muscle structures. So on the left side, we have uh, the cortus abductor, short, short abductor, and the, sartori the sartorius, which is in the middle, and in the right side, the femoral rectum muscles. So once we have this correlation to do the template of the lymph node dissections, we need to know also that the difference in between going deep and superficial um, uh, deep or superficial node dissection will be the difference in between the fascia, the fascia of the muscles. So the most part of the patients going to superficial inguinal node dissection, you will see how do we do the standardized technique of video endoscopic. So in video endoscopic we have uh, triangulation. Uh, we normally do a pressure level of 10, not too high because it's very easy to, to, to expand the, the leg. Anyway, in the interior we can have uh, some of the nodes, as you see in this image, which is changing the anatomy of the saphenous vein. We have been finding a lot of differences in between saphen vein, who can have also some tranches to the, to the leg. So it's not all the time that saphen vein coming from the cajado de saphena, uh, from femoral uh, vein, can have very, very different uh, ways to go in his drain. But the patients have, most part of the time, 
uh, increase of the of the return of the venous return because of the same pathology of the tumor. So you have here a small example of triangulation. We have two centimeters right, two centimeters left to have the to do the approach of the trockers. Normally at the beginning we were doing uh, endoscopic like this, and it's a little bit high. You will see in some image I will show you later. We are fixing all the time the, the trocar. We are using a 10 millimeters uh, optic. You have there an example of an empty space in a superficial and deep uh, lymph node dissection. After all these years of experience, we have found that uh, advanced disease but not fixed nodes, uh, we can do and we can perform uh, lymph node dissections in which we can find um, till 11, uh, 14 lymph nodes. In this video of right bail, you are seeing the dissection. We can use energy, we can use clips. It depends on, it's a huge variability. Normally we use uh, 10 millimeters clips or, or other we can use uh, hemologs. In this case, we're using 10 millimeters clips. When we are going to the dissection with the instrument, we can find uh, a lot of small vessels uh, who can be the, the drain from the safena or also the the nose vessels. So in generally we control the lower part. Here will be the inguinal ligament uh, going up. Below we have the fascia of the muscles, which we cannot see, it's here normally. So we are working in the superficial in the superficial space of nodes dissection. As you see before, we have all this yellow fatty around. It's important to have the differentiation in between this fat and uh, the, the nodes who are there. So working sometimes with blunt dissection and also with active energy to avoid uh, the possibilities of having lymphocytes postoperatively. So again, you have here the releasing of the nodes. Normally this is uh, superficial. You will see in a few seconds how we are pulling with the, two, with the left hand. The left hand is pulling the whole structure, you see. So we are removing a node which was not fixed to the skin, which is important, but it was already over two centimeters. So in this side of the dissection, we have the inguinal uh, ligament, which is covered by uh, fatty tissue. It's important to say that uh, correlated to the legs, uh, the anatomy of the legs in, in general in the Mexican population can be uh, with a lot of uh, fatty tissue because Mexico City and Mexico in general has huge statistics of, of obesity. So it's not the same when we are working into the legs uh, to differentiate these, uh, these structures. As the correlation as the tumor uh, that it's advanced, we can finally do a nice dissection of the whole superficial nodes here, as you see, and going through the ligament upper, normally laterally on the left or laterally on the right to avoid safena. There exists before some theories in 2012, 2011 about uh, having lymphedemas in the legs. Uh, normally we don't uh, spare the safena. We we move the safena in generally in the patients, like 70% of the patients we remove it. And we haven't found really a correlation in between uh, having sacrific sacrificing the, the safena or having lymphedemas. This is an example of left side. This was a very young patient 35 years uh, old, coming from the south of Mexico, with a squamous uh, penile cancer. And if you pay attention here to the image, we have this fatty, sticky tissue, which can be sometimes very sticky to, to, to dissect. So normally we perform with uh, energy this dissection. We try to go farther than farther from the from the nodes. to take the most possible tissue. So again, this upper side is the inguinal lymph, uh, in, inguinal ligament cor cor correlation in the anatomic way. 
And here you can you can follow this uh, note, which is very clear to the view. Technically, here we need to be very careful with the skin. We cannot go too up to avoid the postoperative necrosis, which can be. So sometimes we use the the energy not too high, or just blunt dissection to remove the nodes from the from the closest part to the skin. Sometimes uh, variation of the anatomy of the safena can be, or even the safena can change position because of the move of these nodes. So we are trying to remove all these nodes here. I will explain you in a few minutes how we perform robotically. But first of all, we perform cases uh, as video endoscopic. So you, ha you see here, we have the node, all this space. We have some perforant veins, and we can have safena also. So we need to empty really all the whole template in between inguinal ligament and laterally the, the saphenous vein, going deeper to the cajado of the safena, which is normally controlled by hemolog. To remove the whole the whole package of, of nodes. The view is good. Normally, we don't have, if we have a nice installation of trockers, we don't have problems with uh, leaking air, which is quite important because it's a, it's a small space. But if we have nice position of the trockers, uh, we can work in 10 millimeters. If any problem is happening, we can do a fixed external uh, stitch to do not have this, to work more uh, comfortable. So you see you have some perforance there going to the skin. We normally left five millimeters in between five to eight millimeters free of the tissue to do not have ne postoperative necrosis in the skin. We can apply some clips also to avoid lymphosal. To leave the space in between the skin and to follow the full the full dissection of the of the nodes. Victor, a question. Do yes. you do you find some difference in uh, terms of uh, lymphocell using clip or not? Or only on energy? We have using both techniques. In some patients we can just go fast and apply the, the energy. Yeah. But we have seen that this is not actually a good idea the, here because we have uh, uh, another vessels that we maybe don't see and they will give a leakage for sure. Okay. So, so the, the clip is the best way? I think, like the yes, in my opinion, the clip is, is the best for this region. It's not exactly the same as we are performing lymph node dissection retroperitoneally or in another part. Here, the charge of, of, of lymphs is it's very high because of all these uh, coming back uh, from, the, from the legs flu yes. flow. Sometimes, as you see here in video endoscopic, which is a difference with the robot, because with the robot we have more fixed, uh, the trockers are more stable because of the arms of the robot. But by pure lab, you can need to be fighting with the assistant, as in all laparoscopies, uh, fighting, fighting with the assistant to do have control of the trockers, or with the camera, which we are forgetting with, uh, with robotics now. So robotic uh, approach is giving us this stabilization of the leg and better work there. Because huge uh, tumors in, uh, in our series of patients, we can have also big safenas or big changes in the, in the venous flow. So sometimes when, when completing the lymph node dissections, you need to be sure that you are clipping the whole lymph vessels, but also not allowing uh, any bleeding from, from the safena. Specifically when you are going down, here we were very trustful because we are close to the skin. Uh, it's not the usual space to find the, 
to find a uh, big Safenus. Normally Safenus is going down to the Cajado to to follow the femoral vein. But in this case we have because of the charge of, of nodes, the Safena can change his position, so he came uh, uh, over, and we are sure that this can be stuck, you know. The nodes can be surrounding the Safenus, so we sacrifice all the time Safenus and do, again, some clips control. So, since we were collaborating with the Latin American group because of the high incidence of penile cancer, uh, we are working uh, with some countries, Brazil, which has also huge incidence on penile cancer, uh, Peru, Uruguay, and Mexico, we are growing in the, in the list, uh, trying to show the technique of uh, video endoscopic inguinal nipple dissection, and trying to recuperate the, the database uh, as big as we can. Till now, we have performed in, in between these four countries 150 groins in 110 patients. The median follow-up has been six years, starting from the group from Brazil. We came later to, to this collaborating group, but it's already four years. Uh, the operating time for Bailey is, is very short. Once you know the limits and the positions, can be in nine minutes. Sometimes we, we do we do perform in two, in two teams, so you have one team in the left uh, leg, you have another team in the right leg, and it's, it's, it can be very short and, and easy. The skin morbidity actually is 5%, so we have uh, winning in this aspect. The lymphatic morbidity, you see, is very, it, it can change a lot. It can be in between 5 to 25%. And the first reason of coming back the patient, of coming to, to, to hospital of the patient, is exactly the, the, the lymphocell, which goes with fever princi principally, and we notice the augmentation in the leg. Most part of these patients uh, are going to a Clavian three uh, uh, complication, so when the patient is in this situation, we drain by interventionist or with an ultrasound, we, we just drain the lymphocell. The overall morbidity is 5 to 30 percent. This is more correlated to the oncological results. Uh, we have seen patients that have uh, partial penectomy or total penectomy, and in a few months, they, they is devastating. The, the the penile cancer, especially when you have this chemus situation, is is devastating. So the morbidity increases naturally with the with the disease. The lymph node removal can be in between. The median is uh, eight. And normally we don't go to conversion. If, if we have difficult situations, could could be a, a bleeding, small bleeding, but normally we, we finish the procedures without uh, getting into conversion. Twenty-five percent of resection of positive lymph nodes. That's that's quite important because when we have in uh, some palpable nodes already, uh, it means that some of them will be positive. Uh, normally, in America, we are performing a lot of PCT scan. We have the possibility to do uh, glucosa PCT, and we are putting these patients into the PCT scanning to show if they have uh, some recurrence, local recurrence, or even interiorly pelvic recurrence. Because we cannot forget that uh, normally inguinal, uh, in superficial or deeper uh, dissection, needs to be joined to the pelvic one. Cancer-specific survival is 90%, not, not bad, and overall survival is 85%. For the Mexican bio results we have here, uh, they are young patients. We have uh, 42 to 21. The, the, uh, after the drain, the time, the time of draining is the, is the longest. We need to do in between uh, 14, 21 days. So the patient is not staying at hospital. Normally we perform the, the inguinal lymph node dissection and the next day they, they go home. But we have a careful control of, the, of them coming to the, to the appointments till the time we remove the, the drains. We use small drains to the legs, as you see here in the image. And this is the result of positive lymph nodes. This is for the Mexican series. We have 16.6% of positive uh, uh, nodes to the tumor. And one of the difference in between video endoscopic and robotic uh, approach 
is the length. Because as you know, with a robotic system, we need to have more length to the instruments. So this allows us to go lower, a little bit lower. We have here the knees. So we go upper the knees like four centimeters. And if you see in the bale, it's like a more, more high, much more high. When we are starting the dissection in the robotic uh, way, you will see we start in the skin, taking care of it. So the drains are removed like in, in medium uh, average, like at uh, 14 days. So for the robotic inguinal lymphadenectomy, uh, there is a lot of groups writing already in America. Uh, the why, how, and what uh, really to perform if this is a controversy, we, we are not sure if we should follow doing the, the robotic approach. We start with the robotic approach in 2015 uh, in Mexico City. Normally, we, at that time, we used to have the SI system, which is more complicated to do the installation. Do the installation to the robotic approach takes more time. You need to have all the team ready to, to, to do the good positioning of the robot. So in general, what we do is to, to place the robot in the side, very, very side to the table, as you see in the image. We already have the two legs uh, in adduction. So we will have the space to, to do everything. At the beginning, we are starting the position, so robot is ready and patient is ready to, to avoid the, to decrease the time, because if not, we will lose too much time in between this, doing these maneuvers around. So now the team of anesthesiologists and everybody knows where, where we are going. Normally, we place the robot on the right side, but it could be in the left. It depending if you are moving your third arm to the left or to the right. So we have two arms in the left and one arm in the, into the right. With this position of the robot, you don't need to, you, know, you, you, you are going to redock the instruments, but you are not moving anymore the, the console, of the, 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 the car of the robot. The robot is staying there. Sometimes we just get close the one of the legs to do the both sides. So you have here, you have this position. As I showed you in the previous image, we go lower because of the length of the in robot instruments. We do also a triangle following the Machado's technique. Normally we use the scissors, one uh, grasper, the optic zero degrees going up. And we can do an extra port of five millimeters to the assistant to have clips or to bring the, the aspirator if, if necessary. In the robotic approach with the SI system, we need to go a little bit uh, more external to the leg. And this is a, a problem because sometimes you can have some clashing in the structure of the robot, but at this moment we have uh, exactly the, the lines where we avoid the, the clashing. Just a few months ago, uh, we changed now the robot for the XI, so we will be waiting to have uh, less clash, clashing and to reduce the time of installing the robot. Normally we do a blunt dissection with the finger. With the robot, the difficulty is if, because we are going down to the knee and you need to have uh, longer fingers to go the dissection the, the, most, uh, the most upper as possible. But normally we perform this dissection just a few millimeters lower from the from the skin to protect it, to save the most possible vessels who are uh, giving this nutrition to the skin. So we can do laterally over the muscles. We can have a nice reference taking the muscles. It depends of the of the patient or if it's too fatty or we have uh, better muscles in the leg. We can just follow the sartorius, which is going to be one of the indicators touching the leg to have the, the, the correct direction in the lymph node dissection. Here you have another example. Here we have the robot behind, but the robot is ready. The patient's legs are ready. We have the adduction also. To installate the trockers, we do the both legs. So we have two, two, two games of, uh, of trockers. So we do this step at the first time. We do the installation of trockers at first time for both legs. Left and right legs are ready with the trockers. Okay. 
it's very useful to have the view of the engine also on because sometimes you can get lost in the installation of the trockers so it's important to have this view maybe of the inginal zone we do a small dissection like a one centimeter so you can see in the image this is a very important part of the dissection of the subcutaneous tissue we try to go into this way if the finger is not enough, we use the scissors to do this dissection further as possible, closest as the inguinal ligament. You cannot reach it, but you prepare the, the space. So once you prepare the space, we will go to the trocar and insufflate to 10 millimeters of mercury. We can do some maneuver of the, the, the bread maneuver, I, uh, maneuver I, I call it. Because once you have the trocars, you push the ear with, with your arms like, a, like you were preparing the, the farin bread. So this will allow you to have more dissection with the ear, not just with the finger, and accomplish to have the full space. Did you try to do that with the balloon, like in retroperitoneal? Uh... Yeah, I was going to comment this. Uh, we have never tried with the balloon, but maybe it will be a good idea to, to have the, the dissection. Because of the length of the section? You know, yeah. Yeah, because uh, if you cannot go further, so yeah. mm -hmm. with the balloon will be easier to have very clean space in the inguinal, yeah. <laughs> we fix always the, the main trocar, but normally as you see with the robot, the, the skin is tolerating better, and because it's going to be very fixed with the structure of the robot, you you don't suffer too much with this uh, moving of the trockers as we suffer in uh, in the endoscopic approach. At the end, you have this structure. The assistant's going to be here. We are doing basic triangulation. We will have grasper and scissors. When is the leg? The when the leg is the left side, we have the assistant here, so he can go through a five millimeter stroker here, or uh, in the middle. In the middle is more complicated, as you will see in the next image. So normally it's easier to have just the assistant changing uh, the site and having five millimeter support uh, to bring um, hemalogs, uh, clips, or whatever we need. So this is the position in general. So I think with the XI system, we will be able to do a side docking, which allows us to do not have the robot just in a specific place and to have better, uh, better approach conditions to the inguinal uh, area. As you see here, this is the sartorius muscle. When professors were performing a long time ago, the sartorius transposition, it was because they were moving the, the sartorius, the inserting sartorius to cover the femoral vessels. We are trying to modify the technique, going through the, going through the, to the fascia. The fascia is here, you see? But this is the fascia who is covering the muscles. We, we, are in, we are here in the dips, in the deep lymph node section, not on the upper of the fascia. So we are trying to modify the technique to go just for the lymph nodes in the deeper position, trying to do the work of dissecting femoral vessels without uncovering the fascia. So keeping the fascia as a protector, not the muscle transposition. That's the main idea of modifying the technique. And once we finish with the lymph node dissection in the deeper side, we just come back a little bit with the trockers. The fascia will go down, and then we perform the superficial inguinal uh, lymph node dissection to have both sides. When the disease is too big, we have some, some problems with this because fascia can be sticky to the nodes. So it's mandatory to cut the fascia and to remove the whole nodes going to the callado of the, of the saphen, venus. And here we need to be more careful with the femoral nerve. This small stimulation of energy can get you move the, the leg, so we need to be farther from the, from the nerve and trying to have nice control of the vascular structures. So as you see, we are performing also here the dissection of nose. This patient has less activity, less, less tumor activity.
So when, pre when preserving the saphenous vein, we sometimes we do CT scans controlling the, the femoral vessels, as you can see here. The, res the final result of the drain is here. We use all the time the socks, uh, the, the socks, sorry, the socks, the, the compression socks. They leave, they go home with the, with the socks like for 10 days. So they come after to remove the stitch and the drain 10 days after with the, with the socks. <coughs> If we have done a nice job with the skin, the, the millimeters of difference of the skin, normally we will not have any necrosis on, on this area. So till now we have performed 24 inguinal bilateral robotic uh, uh, approaches. The docking time is, uh, can be 17 minutes once we, we learn, but the at the beginning we were taking 45, 50 minutes. It was, it was complicated. The median loss milliliters is 80. The drain is quite similar, onset to 21. Nodes number in between 11 and 9. And in the robotic cases, we have till now uh, two of median of uh, positive uh, tumor nodes dissection. Just to take home message, uh, it's feasible, yes, with both techniques. Maybe talking about the price will be, of course, more expensive to perform by robotic surgery. If we compare open surgery to bead endoscopic, we have this advantage. This, the resection could be similar. The potential of reduced morbidity, of course, is uh, it's going better. The recovery of the patients going to work is not as, as good because if they're going home with the drain and they need at least two weeks to be waiting for full recovery, and we want to be as an acceptance technique. It depends, of course, in the epidemiology of the countries. Uh, but we are thinking to go follow to the bail, but the, the bead endoscopic is a very nice approach. But on the other side, because robotics groups are growing, if possibility to, to do it also, the docking and the ergonomics will be better. We have been also considering if, what will we happen if we go to the single pole robot. But I think single ro robot, uh, it will be a, an incision, uh, considerable incision, so we will see about. If we just compare bail to robotic, uh, resection is, uh, of simi is similar in the lymph nodes. The morbidity is quite similar, and the recovery will be the same with both, with both minimal invas invasive techniques. Uh, we are waiting from, for more oncological results about these dissections. Uh, the main step will be to the selection of the patient, know exactly which patients we are putting into the, into the bail or the robotic bail. Uh, normally it's expensive because, as you know, this disease uh, it's for people who has a, another level of life or hygienic uh, aspects. Uh, but I think because of the robotic and the laparoscopic approaches around the world are growing, maybe also this technique will have uh, some acceptance uh, once we show better results. So, yeah? For you. It's, uh, it's a problem of cost at that moment, but we, it will change in the next... Uh, a few times, so I've seen a good result because I remember at the time of open surgery. Yeah. Uh, it's quite quite different for the patient. The, the result, especially in terms of quality of skin, yeah. uh, necrosis, and uh, long stay, and uh, a beautiful, a, a terrible follow-up uh, for that kind of problems. Yes. So endoscopy is sure a, a good, good, beautiful things for for that patient. And uh, I agree completely with you when the cost of robotic surgery will uh, decrease, uh, <laughs> it is the future. So as we don't know if we are going to, to robots, we will be smaller uh, in the future yeah. or having another cheaper. possibility, cheaper, <laughs> cheaper, smaller will be great for this, yeah. for this area of intervention. Congratulations. Very yeah. nice. Thank you very Thank much you very for, much. for your attention. Thank you.